Greetings, survivors and friends. Shadowfrax here with a full roundup for Maze Patch to Repopulation Unit Survival Test, or Rust, as you used to know it. Of course, it could have stood for all sorts of things, and you lot came up with some great alternatives that I'll read out a bit later, along with another round of psychoanalysis via some more Rust metrics. But first, May the 4th was with us yesterday, and with it arrived the RUST update, adding an all new monument to reduce the build space further in return for a whole silo full of loot, some extra insights into the lore, and just like quadruple ply quilted bog roll, a more satisfying way to wipe. For a more detailed look at the monument, please see my vid from last week. It's not much has changed, but in short, a big hatch at the surface, when opened, will lead you down into the radioactive silo containing a huge ICBM and a lot more besides. Just remember that unless you have a man on the outside, you can't come back this way, so come prepared. It's a fairly linear monument, technically just one long corridor with rooms off to the side until you get to the end, but those rooms are full of loot and are guarded by a new flavour of night vision scientists who take great exception to you disturbing their experience experiments and will try to kill you instantly in the name of science. They really should have better security on the way in if they're that bothered. These chaps have more health than normal scientists, along with better gear and loot, but they are more affected by flashbangs thanks to the night vision. And as of this patch, flashbangs now work on all scientists except peacekeepers and guards. As previously mentioned, the main purpose of this monument involves the whole wipe mechanic thing, and here at the bottom you'll find a laptop with a countdown and I'm rather disappointed that it doesn't say then is whip or something similar. When it reaches zero, it keeps going, but assuming you wipe the server on time, which is something you currently have to do manually, then the needle returns to the start of the song and we all sing along like before. Server owners can set their own wipe schedules for the timer to run off of, or even a specific Unix timestamp, and you'll find a link to the destructions in the description of this vid. Although there are no actual pyrotechnics involved at the end of a wipe, yet, and everything concludes with a whimper rather than a bang, that's not to say it never will. A Big Bang cinematic branch is being worked on that I believe will be an in-game thing. Not sure at the moment. I guess that's subject to change. As the timer enters its final 24 hours though, NPC activity on the server will ramp up. I guess because they all want to be close to the blast for science. And so all three people left on the server at this point will witness a number of Bradleys starting to patrol the road and trail network and be treated to flybys from F-15s. Although don't look at them too close up, will you? They're more like spud gun than top gun. This is a work in progress feature and future events will also include infantry patrols, bombing runs and more mutant chicken attacks hopefully, but watch this space and I'll tell you when I find out. Now I love what the team have done here and this is all fabulous for the lore of course, but a part of me thinks that the wind down isn't going to be properly enjoyed by the majority. If I was in charge of Rust, and you should be very glad that I'm not, then I'd be tempted to put the Bradley and bombing run shenanigans etc at the beginning of a wipe instead, where they'd be more appreciate it and add to the initial challenge of trying to get a foothold on the island rather than the later challenge of just trying to stay awake but why not let me know what you think in the comments below oh and i'd also like to see a mechanic whereby we could survive the wipe with whatever loot we have in our inventory by hiding in a fridge just before the timer runs out in other news thompson's and mp5s have been buffed as far as their accuracy is concerned with a higher chance to land center hits during extended automatic fire and thompson's being more predictable Further adjustments may come in the following months. The first new building skin is in the store now, and as I showcased last week, this adds an Adobe option for Stone Tier. It was interesting to see what your expectations and hopes were for the price point, and I can see now that in the UK it costs £10.39, which equates to about $13 US money. It is rather good though, and a lot of work's gone into it, but let me know what you think. And as mentioned last week, there are more skin sets on the way, including Legacy Wood, Brick, Shipping Container, and Brutalist. There are new world models for ammo because it's just not safe to store bullets in bags, and recyclers are now animated when they're doing their thing. Oh, and you can now admire the RF transmitter. Ooh, yes. A reminder that skins can no longer be disabled as of this patch, so if someone wants to dress like they had a fight with a charity shop and lost, then you have to see it, and any skins with perceived visual benefits can no longer be negated by the beholder. This of course swings both ways, and I'm not involving myself with it apart from being the messenger of course. Viewing CCTV in Rust Plus got nerfed somewhat, you can't watch static cameras from it now such as on oil rigs, you won't see players or name tags from as far away through cameras, about 
30 meters instead of 100 now, and you'll only be able to view cameras from it when not connected to the server. Additionally, crate and explosion map markers won't be sent to Rust Plus. There's a full explanation about this and the associated com cards for server owners on the dev blog. And green military crates have been removed from power lines. Another round of Twitch rivals and drops are coming up on May the 16th, and several official hardcore servers are being retired due to low player activity, with improvements being considered for both hard and softcore game modes in the coming months. Apart from this, there were a load of other tweaks and fixes that you'll find the details of on the dev blog. Also worth noting, on the dev blog this month is another round of gameplay analytics. Now one month in, with pie charts mm, showing damage per gun, top player trades, how AKs are born, and the top loot sources. Also, the total eye-watering amount of items across just 50 face punch servers. Hopefully all this info will enable the team to identify where you're having a bit too much fun and adjust things accordingly in the coming months. Now, you chaps had some great ideas about what Rust should actually stand for last week, and to pick a few that amused me, repetitively under stress but thriving, repeat until sanity tested, raid until CTC, really unstable server technology, reing until sore throat, rock usage secures treasure, rambunctious unsupervised stranded traitors, random unhinged salty teenagers, really unfun, see you tomorrow, remarkably unplayable since 2018, I think that's one of my favourites, although Legacy was a lot earlier than that, and are you subscribed to Shadowfrax? Well, are you? Why not now while you're thinking about it? And leave me a like please if you enjoyed this vid. Don't forget, you can catch me in other places such as Twitch and various socials, all the links are below, and thank you once more to all my amazing supporters. I shall catch you all very soon, but in the meantime, you know the drill. Keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. Don't look at them too close up, will you? They're more like spud gun than top gun.